Hi, everyone. This is Kara Newman, and this is the Hukalo Saturday webinar. Um, normally today, Jim Charles would be channeling, but he is taken ill with the flu, unfortunately. So, oh, and guess what? Now I get to hear myself in the uh, you YouTube page. So one moment, it's freaking me out. Yeah, let me turn myself off. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, one moment. Okay, now I got to hear myself say, guess what, I get to hear myself. Okay, anyway, so we're going to do something a little bit differently today. And we're going to open up the floor for people who are aspiring channels, people who uh, speak a galactic language and would just like to practice. So if you've, um, Christine is here, we've got Sheer, we have Amanda, we have, who else do we have? We have Angela, we have John, we have Raymond. Um, and if you have anybody anybody that's in the YouTube channel that can hear me and can go to the Facebook page to get the link, then uh, you can also come in the room. But we're going to just do something a little bit differently, just so people get a chance to channel someone who maybe channels um, in their house but hasn't channeled in front of a group of people or is not really sure of their channeling ability. So I, I, I will channel too if, if there's nobody else, but I really want to facilitate this for you. And I'm getting a message. Okay. All right. Um, I was just looking. I got a message from Don. Don, why don't you come in the room if you can, and then you can share some of your stuff as well. Let me post in the Facebook link. And, I, and I'm sorry to make this slow. Let's see. Christine. Yes. You, do you channel or not? You don't channel, do you? No. 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 Okay. But, but we do have Angela, and she does channel, don't you, Angela? Yes. So I'm going to move this here to you, and we're going to turn it over to you. So, Angela, who do you channel? Um, I channel a few different people. Um, okay. uh, I've channeled to Kerr, um, Father, God. I've channeled God and um, a couple others. Um, this will be my first time in public, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, perfect. Okay, don't be nervous. We're all friends here. Yeah. So, you know, let me tell you, I'll just tell you just my experience is that um, the first time I channeled ever was on a live radio show. I had just channeled once in front of my computer with me asking the questions. and uh, But it was really when the person really asked me the questions that the flow started to really come. So... Um, that's the way it, that's the way it is and and when you get someone else asking you questions that's not you right. it gives you the ability to really co-create and expand your experience so I'm happy and I think we're all happy to participate with you and and we you know it's a very relaxed atmosphere so yeah so basically how do you how do you go into your uh, chant or meditation or I do. I do Pre a little meditation first, and okay. um, a little prayer, and then, and then the person. Not to Kerr is here today. Um, she, okay. She told me that she would be here and she would channel with me today. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So that's interesting, everyone. Just so you know, you know, we have an entity like to Kerr who <coughs> is on a ship over Sedona. She's very much um, one of the prime entities of human colony and she comes through Jim primarily, but she's going to come through Angela today and some other entities do that. They come through different channels. So that'll be interesting to see to Kerr coming through you and how that, how that manifests. So, okay. And, and before to, we, yes, sorry, go ahead. you uh, want to do like a little galactic language first, or would you like to just channel first? I want you to do whatever you feel. Galactic language we can do after. It's whatever you feel. We'll do whatever you want. Because this is your uh, this is your moment. Okay. So I would like to do um, a little blessing uh, galactic language first to um, get the energy that I need. Sure. And do you want me to interpret it for you? Um, sure, yes. Okay. And, and also, too, um, before we start, I just want to say two things. And I'm just going to do a little commercial here. Um, okay. 
February 1st through the 6th, we have the, let me just switch the camera back to myself. Um, February 1st through the 6th, Human Colony has their Sedona workshop. So there's still a few places available. They have almost 20 people, but they've got you know, three or four places. Um, it's $588, and you can pay half now and half when you get there, though. We're getting very close. But if you want to know all about the um, Hukalo ascension workshop you you'll be able to learn galactic languages you'll learn galactic reiki there'll be channeling classes with jim and max and you can go to hukalo.org for that so please be sure it's just coming up it's just two weeks away so make sure you do that and um also when you do your blessing let's do a send some energy also to jim if you can if you're if you can focus on that so because jim charles is a little bit sick with the flu he's coming down with it and he didn't feel like he could manage today so all right angela so everyone this angela uh, this is angela this is her first time channeling she's going to be channeling most possibly to car though we're open to whatever happens and then just from there you just tell us and lead us through the meditation and, and we'll go with you and everyone here i just want to uh stress that um, you're speaking, when you're speaking to an entity that's channeled, you're speaking to a higher intelligence. Uh, it's your opportunity to get to know that being, to understand their unique perspective. So questions like, do you have any messages for me are not really that helpful for the collective of us. So please, when you're asking questions, ask questions that are relevant to the entity that's being channeled. If you don't know what would be relevant, then ask questions about that entity so that we know who we're dealing with so i just want to say it like that everyone's usually very good about it but i just want to put it out there if you would like a private reading with angela after this we'll make sure that you have a way to get in touch with her so okay off you go angela okay. We are sending healing now to Jim, focusing light energy on his chest and on his nasal passages, also to bring him energy to break his fever and to calm his nausea. We are sending light to this being who brings so much light into the world. And we ask you to join with us in our blessing of Jim. Thank you. Greetings, I'm Tikar. Greetings, Greetings Tikar, and welcome. Thank you for coming today. It is always my pleasure to speak to the group. Well, we're very excited to speak to you through another being, another channel, and, and we're interested to, to encounter you in this way. It is always through the channel, the person that we speak, using their mind, their information, their energies as we speak. It may not be as prominent through others. We use the channels as we can.
do you have questions for me? Yes, um, I, I'll, I'm just going to let the people in the chat know and also that we can take questions for Takur. But Takur, do you have any, can you maybe give us um, a perspective of what it's like to channel through Angela versus Jim? Is there, what is the difference and how does that work in, in that way? The energy is not as strong as Jim the connecting this way is a little different. We use the language within the mind of the person that we channel when we speak through others, we use their vocabulary, their knowledge sometimes we cannot get what we need to speak through our language through the person and so we use what their their own knowledge angela is a good channel and she does have knowledge so that is why i am able to speak through her our energies connect when you channel, the energies must coincide with each other. When, we, when she was already right. picking you, yeah, she was already picking you up um, min, many minutes before we even started, and she was quite she knew quite well that you were going to be coming through. So we thank you for she being. She has channeled me before. Okay. And so I. She understands my energy. I understand. Um, we do have some questions. If 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 we can start with questions, if that's okay with you. Yes. Okay. Um, Sheer, why don't you go ahead? Sheer, hello. Sheer saying he doesn't have a. I, I remember Sheer saying he doesn't have a microphone. So I'll ask the question for him. He's, he wanted to know, is there development, a development on the cabal slowing time? He goes, it's a, yeah. He says, is, that's his question. There he is. He wants to know if it's gonna be over soon. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yes. There is evidence that the cabal has slowed time, yes due to their travels it has slowed time one millisecond is that perceptible by humans this kind of slowed down millisecond of time is that it is what is happening it is a millisecond a day and what is happening is, as that happens, you on Earth do not experience the result of that. What is happening is, outside of Earth, it is beginning to be noticeable because you are coming out of phase of the rest of the universe. What's interesting is there another person in the chat asking almost the opposite question. Um, Kina or Kina is asking, why does time seem to be running so fast? She says, I can't cope with how fast the days are going. So it's a sort of a double question. Shear is asking about it slowing down and Kina is asking about it slow, uh, speeding up. <laughs> the perception of that time moving forward would be the individual person experiencing the time moving forward for them individually, meaning as they are moving through their day, things are at a higher rate because they individually are moving forward at a faster race pace than the rest of the people around them. I understand. And I apologize for my typing uh, in the background there. 
So um, there's a question in the chat from Christine that wants to know about why, what is behind the division of California? Why is California trying to separate right now? That is controversial because part of each part of California wants to be their own, but yet they do not want to break away. It is such a large area and they want to separate themselves. So it's not um, anything to do with um, outside alien um, influence? No. Thank it you. is in within the own state itself. Thank you, Tucker. You're welcome. Um, there's a question from uh, Danielle in the chat. She says, and now it's disappeared for me. One second. I have to go back. I apologize. One moment. Hmm. Okay. Um, is, is it possible because we haven't had an update from the colonies for quite some time. Is it possible to give an idea of what's happening there now and what are what is what is being focused on in the colonies at this moment? Well, there is much activity within the colonies. People are coming and going and also learning. The light that must come now has to be at a greater level. The ascension portion of this is at a faster pace moving forward. Things are coming into alignment with the ascension. And so the people that visit the colonies at this time are learning at a greater level, at a faster pace to bring the light portion of the ascension into alignment. I did want to say this as well. There is much activity on your planet in regards to weather, seismic, and just the weather portion and the seismic portion. Gurkfik Nir is working diligently with Gaia to keep things at bay as much as possible. There is much activity on your earth in regards to weather manipulation. We are working to keep that as well within to prevent larger weather anomalies. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I had got some information the other day myself. I was having a conversation with um, a guy named Ruben um, who is has a radio show, actually has a internet TV show called ED Extraterrestrials. And we were talking about um, we were talking about disclosure, and I very clearly got the information from my guides that there are two divergent timelines that are starting right now in this time period, and they are beginning in this period. And one is a one is sort of a a, a timeline of um, how do you call it disclosure that has a very negative bent to it because there's sort of a demand in the in the group of hum humanity right now where they want disclosure they want it now they don't care about the repercussions of it and that seems that that one is going to go in a more negative way because that's more of an ego based disclosure and then there's another divergent timeline that's beginning that is more of a love based heart centered disclosure where humanity does sort of raise their energy so that they really are ready for this kind of 
they've raised their frequency, so they're meeting the um, ETs on a higher frequency as opposed to on a lower frequency disclosure where you would be meeting ETs on that frequency. And I got the, 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 um, the information of these two timelines going and that right now we really are having to make that choice. Which way are we going? Are we willing to sort of stay the course so that we raise our energy so that we can meet our extra dimensional brothers and sisters in their energy on a higher frequency or are we going to stay in a lower frequency where we are now even though we are expanding but meet the because you can only be in you can only meet energies that are coming together um so are we going to now uh, stay on this lower timeline and and that that was the question do you have any uh, insight about that if that's something that you are also dealing with Yes, that is a twofold question. Let me speak on the first half. In order for disclosure to come about, the consciousness of the people will bring it about. There are some that want to put fear into the majority of the population to keep the ETs at a level of fear-based, we want to attack you. We want to take over your planet. That form of thought process. If they can keep the majority of the people in the fear-based, then the governments have control over the people when disclosure actually happens. The consciousness of the people, if it is high enough, is what brings about the disclosure. So in essence, there are two energies at working at this time, yes. The people want to also bring forth disclosure. So they are raising their vibration to make that possible okay does thank that you answer very your much. question yes it does and 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 i have a question that dovetails into that um it's from daniel uh in the chat and he says uh, what can we do as light workers to take down the cabal faster or is this going to be a natural pro process as the earth is raising into a higher dimension in answer to that question it will be, things will be as they will be. We cannot take down anyone, but our consciousness will move forward in a positive way to bring about the things that must come. Thank you. And just to go, go back, I have another question um, from Krulik. Krulik is saying, I feel that the Illuminati are shooting themselves in the foot by trying to maintain control. Am I correct in assuming that their power is rapidly declining? Their movements of themselves are causing their slowdown. Yes, they are moving at a slower rate now. Can you expand on that at all or? I cannot expand on that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Ecclesiastes 888 asks, um, he says, will you um, ask if Saturn serves as an immigration doorway to the solar system? Saturn itself has its own energies about it, it is it is not a doorway, but a stopping place or a movement through to move forward to other areas, yes. 
All right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there is a question um, from Jess and says, uh, hi, Takura, can you please explain to us what really happened in Hawaii and Japan? Were incoming threats intercepted and if so, by who? By whom, Jess? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Remember, if the governments can keep a fear-based mentality within its people, then they may see what the reaction of the people would be. This was not on per this was not an accident. It was on purpose, this message that was sent out. To see the ramifications of that to see what the thought processes of those people would be okay and what were the what, what were they thinking the thought processes would be they wanted to see what the thought process of the humans would be in regards to receiving that information what their movements were, how they reacted. It will give the governments a look into what would happen when disclosure comes. Does that make sense? I, I believe so, yes. Um, Christy's asking, did the Pleiadians stop the missile heading toward Hawaii? I cannot comment on that. Okay, that is the answer then. Um, okay, let me just check. Uh, Sheer was asking, he wanted to know about if you, if, I don't know if this is in your uh, scope, but he wanted to ask about angel DNA. He said, uh, he heard that Archangel Michael speaking about angel DNA had been brought to certain people. And he believed some of that is going to Griffic near. And yeah. he wants to he wants to understand if, if that's the case, how does that manifest? What does that mean? There are some that do have the angel DNA. Yes, that is available. You have to ask for it and it has to be approved. But yes, angel DNA is available to people. And 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 uh, Cher wants to know how do they how so what does it look like when they receive it? That's what he wants to know. I guess do they start looking more angelic or is there some no. sort of manifestation? No. What it does is bring you into a more balanced level of thought process. It brings calming. It brings about peace within oneself. There are many facets to the angel DNA, but those are just a few. Okay, I understand better. I, I miscommunicated uh, Shear's question, but now he's clarified. He said, what is it? He wants to know what does the DNA physically look like? Is it, does it come in in a test tube? Is it energetic DNA? Is it, is it, is it actually, I guess, tangible? Can you hold it? My cat is here. He wants to say hi. No, it is not something that you hold. It is something that is given. Okay. And so it's not. That, it, we do not have that in tubes on the ships. No. Okay. The higher um, level beings that offer their DNA, the higher the level, it must come in a energy form. Okay. How is Angela doing? Is she doing all right? Is she tired or do you want to continue, Angela? She's doing okay. Okay. Does she need water or anything like that? 
not at this time. Okay, perfect. All right, if we're if you're happy to continue with us, Takur, um, we are happy to continue as well. Yes. Okay. Please continue. Thank you. Christine has a question for you. Greetings and blessings, Takur. Um, I was wondering, are um, are there still DNA um, downloads being done? Or has that stopped? DNA downloads have not stopped. Only implants at this time have stopped. Okay. I was just wondering, so it's still going through the same way where um, we ask for it and um, if we pass or if it's okay um, with ourselves as well as uh, Grit for Near, um, that it'll be done? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a question from the chat of Lily, Pla Lily Pad has the question. She says, I had an intense dream. A captain of a submarine um, after a long travel was giving me cardinal direction of the ocean. Who was this man from the ocean? Thank you. That's her question. One moment, please. It was, it was someone giving you direction on where you need to go, moving that it will be with water and that your flow through that will be the direction that you put into it, your energy. The person was yourself in a way directing you showing you that you are moving and that your path is clear. She just typed that north was key in the interaction, that the direction north was a key direction. That is the movement that you will be doing. Okay. North can represent multiple things. It can mean that you are moving up, and it can also mean in the direction of moving forward in that process. Moving north in longitude, latitude, direction. All right. Okay. Does do you think the north also maybe has some symbology for north being winter, north being time of year as well, or do you think it's mostly only physical direction? It may mean two things. It may mean moving north, moving up in vibration, mm -hmm. okay. moving in a physical direction north. Okay. Perfect. Um, Takur, if it's okay with you, um, if you would stay around, um, we have uh, in the room, we have a guy named Alex, who's now just learning to channel. And I've invited him in to come in and talk about uh, his experience of channeling. And maybe um, as he describes it, if you have some feedback for him as well, so that we can all help him to navigate what he's experienced and maybe uh, through your energy to prop him up in, in what he's trying to learn. Is that okay with you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Alex, are you there? Hello. Hello, Alex. Hi. So Hi. Um, let me put the camera on you. I'm just going to put you here. 
So everyone, oops, that's me. Hi everyone, this is Alex. Alex, where are you living? Where are you living? Namaste. I'm living in Serbia. Okay, well this is Alex from Serbia. Yeah. And so go ahead and um, we've got Chakur here on hold um, that's gonna assist you, but why don't you tell us what you were starting to say in the chat and, and I'll just let you take it away and then we'll help you navigate this channeling phenomena. Okay, okay thank you. So I, I recently channeled for the first time, it was unexpected, it just came to me. It was my 12-year-old uh, daughter hybrid daughter from Mars. She lives in fourth dimension on Mars. And she told me that there are some kind of, that she live in a base, in a colony. Uh, and there are no wars, there is no hatred, no love. So she came to me, it was very beautiful. It was my first experience. So I wanted to ask the her, the um, does she have any kind of imp information about of life on four dimensional Mars. You're asking to curve to curve as information about four yeah. dimensional Mars. Okay. To curve. One moment, please. Sure. Um, just just while to is thinking, do you, do you have you channeled her only the one time then, Alex? One time. There was only one time. It was just okay. Like, and it was the sort of spontaneous yeah, event. Yeah. I was thinking about something. What will happen? In, in my future and and I saw a white orb and then I okay. asked who's there and she said I'm your daughter and then she told me her name was Jasna it's Slavic name I'm Serb you know so they she explained yeah. Yeah. That there is some kind of social experiment they, they named those children after they their parents uh, ethnicity sure so sure it was just a short okay. message about two minutes. And was it? A, did you get like a download? Did she channel through you, or was it? No, no. I just had those thoughts in my mind, ideas. You okay. know, I didn't hear voices. Okay. I could feel her, and I could sense her image through those emotions. Right. So I, I don't know how to explain it. Have you taken the chance to try to draw her, or no, I didn't, like that? because I don't know how to do it. It, it came spontaneously. So. I wait to to come once again. I had I was uh, uh, I was having a meditation online with uh, Will from Reiki with Will, and during that meditation, I felt the presence on my left side. And he said that he didn't know about my channeling, so he said it's probably some relative, female relative. So I believe it was her, but I don't know okay. how to connect again. Well, we'll we'll do a we're going to do a guided meditation uh, at the end, and and we can maybe try to give you uh, some tools to connect. Okay, I, I know that the one. hybrid children's motto is play, play, play. So <laughs> that's generally when you connect to them. Um, I yeah. can recommend Bridget Nielsen is very good with uh, hybrid children, and she really knows how to connect to them. But okay, let's go back to Takur. So maybe Takur, if you're ready. Um, the question was about uh, what is going on in the fourth dimensional Mars. Well, first of all, yes, that was your hybrid child. You did feel her energy, and she did communicate that thought to you. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to have this confirmation. And when you feel that energy, know that it is her. Okay. Okay. That is the beginning steps in channeling at some time. You receive the information within you, and you know that it is not from you, so it is from outside of you. That is the first step in helping you to channel, to know that that information is from an outside source. For you, that did help bridge that gap in moving you closer to channeling. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This this means a lot to me. Thank you. You are welcome. Just for you, Alex. Just if you you'll hang around, we'll we'll do some, um, and maybe Trakur and I can have a conversation about this now. Um, when it comes to hybrid children and connecting to them, to Kerr, um, because so many people are now starting to come to the realization of their hybrid child. Um, Alex has now the phenomena, the experience of connecting directly and getting information, channeling her. Um, it's her way to connect, but how, if someone really wants to connect, 
how do they really do that? I, I'll give my uh, input as well, but of course you will know much, <laughs> much more than me. So if you can maybe talk to some people about one, you know, I'll just say this: if if you have um, if you have the the feeling that you have a hybrid child, if you say, I wonder if I have a hybrid child, and that's something that's sort of coming in, the answer is yes, you do. That's why you're getting that information. That's why you're starting to have those um, yeah, thoughts. It's, it's just like if you say, oh, I feel Liren. Do I have a connection to Lyra? Yes. That's why you feel Liren. It's, it's very kind of logical in that way. So the thing is then is if you have that information, how do you connect to it? How do you access it so that it's not just something you're feeling and wondering about, but that you actually can enjoy and also connect to? So, Tukur, how would you do that? It is just that. When you bring your thought into the idea that you want to actually speak or feel or get an information about your child, whether you have one, once you have that knowledge that you do, wanting to connect to that child. When you bring your energy into that, they feel that energy. They resonate with it. They will come and they will be around you if they are allowed to move to you. When that happens, you actually feel their energy. And if you speak it within your mind to speak to your child, and then you feel an energy or you get a thought that there is someone there, it is them. Most people, when they're receiving information, whether it is energetically or through the mind, it is difficult at times for them to understand or accept that it is someone speaking to them. When you feel that energy, Acknowledge it. I feel that energy. I feel that there is someone here. It brings them to the awareness that you are acknowledging their presence. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, yeah. that's very true. And, and with the hybrid children, they're existing on a different frequency than us. They're in a much lighter existence. They're, you know, they're really about joy and fun. So yeah. they, you can't access them from a lower vibration. You really have to go up to them. So the, in the moments where you're laughing and having a really good time and, and smiling, if you can make your, uh, what, whatever your approach is, fun and higher energy and sort of almost, I would almost say like a hyper happiness energy when you're really, really blissfully joyful and you can, because the, the hybrid children's motto is play, play, play. They want to play. They're just joy, joy, joy. If you can get into that space, that's really where you will connect the strongest because they have to, they have to come and sort of meet your energy. So as high as you can go, the better. The stronger, just like what Chakur was saying, the stronger. The more you acknowledge it, the more you you know you feel it. People feel prickles all the time, and you see questions, and there's sort of these questions of, oh, I, I have a I have a feeling, but I don't know what it is. Well, the feeling is the knock on the door. That's what what I like to say. And the same thing, and it's in mediumship and also in channeling, and just what Chakur was saying, which was excellent. That if you have the impulse, it's not because you're wondering about it. It's because that energy is trying to connect to you. That is correct. So if you get a prickle about, oh, hybrid child or ET or angel or whatever the energy is, it's not so much that you're thinking of it. It's trying to get your attention. That and as correct. soon as you acknowledge it, you've opened a door. You've opened a pathway because now you're paying attention. And most of the time, the universe is very good in this, you have the ability to pick it up. So that means it's meant for you. You are in some way, you can almost 100% guarantee you're in some way connected, whether it's direct DNA, it might be spiritual DNA, your energetic DNA, it might be your parallel life, a congruent life, a child. There's some kind of connection energy that's for you. There's something. So, for instance, the fact that Angela can channel to Kerr 
means that on some way she's directly connected just as Jim is directly connected to Dakar. That's why they're both able to tap into that energy stream. So never doubt that the energy that's coming through to you, you do have a connection to it or you wouldn't pick it up. You just there's, wouldn't. There's one more thing to add to that as well. Mm. Yeah. When you verbalize out loud, when you hear or feel or receive any information like that, if you actually verbalize it out loud, you are actually bringing it into your awareness. I did that. It, yes. Yeah. So, you know, some people can get nervous when they see something like a white ball of light or anything, but if you can just not, if you don't be nervous, just be in awe of it and be like, wow, great, congratulations. Thank you for, you know, being able to bring that yeah, to me. Yeah, I wasn't scared at all because I was yeah. expecting something to happen. And I had a download about, I don't know, two weeks ago that connecting with people who channel that it will, it will trigger my channeling gift. So it happened. Right. So, so you're, are you, is this something that's happening to you more and more? You're being triggered into channeling? I've been receiving downloads, you know, just the thought appears in my mind up from, I don't know, someplace, I don't know. And I, I make a videos about those things. Okay, but perfect. The first I, time I haven't seen I them. I'll, I'll go so, check you out. Okay, thank you so much. And so, I'm so, having this special connection now with Wendy, our Wendy from Languages of Light. Oh, Light. perfect. Okay. And we talk a lot, and she she activated me. So I did my first uh, light language channeling the other night. So it was wonderful. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. we was trying to get her to come in the room, but yeah, she no, hasn't she's come busy. in the room. Yeah, she'll be <laughs> next week with us. Okay, thank you guys. I will be back in a minute. I have to do something, and I will. All be right. Back. Well, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, Dicker. You are welcome. Okay. So speaking to, on, go ahead. Speaking on light language, mm -hmm. when you do speak in the light language, it also raises your vibration as well. Yes, yes. Um, maybe we could do something right now with light languages for people, um, because light language is something that, if you agree, <clears throat> is an activation. There's an activation that takes place. The activation can be just hearing a light language so that it, it opens up your, um, uh, how do you say it? It just opens up your ability to speak it, to, to experience it. The more you do hear it, the more it, it tunes you. So uh, for people who would like to be attuned to light language, I, I was hoping Wendy would come in like Miss Language of Lights herself, but she seems to be busy, so we can do it ourselves. But um, if you are interested in light language, it's just a matter, just like getting that prickle of a hybrid child. The reason that you're interested in it is because you're probably supposed to speak it. Um, I believe in my study of sound. I'm, I'm a sound yogi. I don't. Most people don't know that, but I I have an in-depth knowledge of sound and uh, sacred sound. And it's a very common thing with uh, people who are who are sound oriented to have some sort of light language. Children will speak a light language. They think it's just gobbledygook, but they will speak it just. Uh, you know, naturally, because it's it's something that they, oh, here, she's here. Ha ha. <laughs> I, <laughs> summoned I summoned her. I summoned her. Did you see I'm that? I summoned her. I did it. <laughs> I'm driving you know, in the car, and I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to get a good enough signal to come in. That's okay. Help, well, be careful when you're driving. What I was just saying is that. Well, I'm not driving. I'm I'm navigating. Well, okay. I'm what I was here, just saying I, is, is, is people I was, yeah, I was watching. You know, people that have an inclination for the light language, um, it can activate you just hearing it. But if you have this sort of even interest, you've got to also trust it. Uh, I, I'll just tell you, you just have to trust that just the interest in it means you have a connection to it. Exactly. I got the information when I was really young. There was a girl that she was talking to me, and she was really, really tall. I mean, she was like super basketball player tall. And she says, you know, all I want to do is play basketball. And I said, well, 
I said, of course you do, because you're made for it. You know, you're made for that. I said, it would be different if you were like two foot 11 and you were telling me, oh, I want to be a basketball player, <laughs> yeah. you know? And that was exactly. before like I had, but I just already had that sort of innate knowledge that you, you, you tend to want to do what you're made to do. Exactly. And it was interesting because the very, very first time I had heard light languages was actually quite some time before I found human colony. And I know that's what brought me there. It's what activated me. It's, it's so um, when I very first heard it, something happened to me. It was a very emotional experience that really didn't describe or understand it. And yeah. so it it was extremely profound for me and it truly did open up. Oh, we're losing her a little bit. I did. That's why I switched the camera. Does. Every single day I over speak, I'm sharing them themselves and um, it has up my channeling abilities. Well, it does activate you and it can, it can stimulate you. I, I started with, I started speaking a light language when I was 15. Um, I spoke it for years, just thinking it was my prayer language, my connection language. Um, when I didn't know what else to do, I would pray in this language. Um, and, you know, for me, it was always just sort of a natural thing that came out. Um, and then as I, as I got more uh, this way before I channeled, and I think the Reiki activation also opened me up even more uh, to possibly channeling and stuff like that. But I think, I think the thing that the, the, the baseline message of what we're saying here is that if you have the, to trust your desire, it's not a weird desire within our group of people. <laughs> it's not a weird desire to have a, a <laughs> I want to collect, I want to qualify that for anybody who's watching. Um, Within our, within our group of people, it's really natural to have an interest in this or else we wouldn't be here um, or you, and you wouldn't feel drawn to it. So if you feel drawn to it, it is absolutely because it's something for you. It's I not to mention something too, Karen, I, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you um, just because no, 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 it occurs here because her yeah. had mentioned just something to me very, very early. Well, to all of us, but I picked up on it specifically because I was so interested in galactic light languages. It was like one of the very, very first times I was in a human colony hangout when Takur was being channeled by Jim. And she had said, watch Jim's hands when he's channeling me. There's very important information and symbology and signals within there that are almost like a part of the whole language. And I've also come to understand that sign language through private sessions with Jim mm. is also a form of communication with our hybrid children. They are telepathic and they learn to communicate telepathically and with hand signals and hand signs so that they can communicate without sound when they when they desire to, which is primarily how they communicate. So I did right. want to mention that as well, that you'll see a lot of uh, light language linguists, if you will, who are scribing them uh, as well as speaking them and as well as doing the the hand signals. And it always, almost feels, and maybe Takur could uh, confirm this too, but it feels as if somehow we're also like, I don't know, manipulating energy or something with the hands while we're speaking the languages. Um, I'm not quite sure. It feels as if I'm literally moving energy with my intentions with the languages. Well, Takur should answer that. Um, I will just say, if you've ever watched Daniel Scranton channel in person, and I just got to see him in person, he does this stuff with his arms like... I, I, it's 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 incredible. Oh, it's yeah, incredible. it's almost as like I can't even. It's like I can't talk languages without moving my hands. <laughs> yeah, he does this. It's sort of this gymnastic event of him doing stuff, and he's got like. I mean, he's doing. It's incredible to see it, but he's really got this whole thing he's doing, and 
I mean, it's really like this. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating he, at all. You know, he and actually he, gave me permission, Karen, to not feel yeah. so self seriously. Daniel was one of the very first channelers I came across and he was yeah. actually speaking some languages back then too. And he was actually one of the people who made me feel braver about doing what I do on camera because yeah. he allowed himself to be free with that movement. So yeah, definitely. Well, for him, it's completely involuntary. And, and what he said was, if my, the movement distracts you, you might want to close your eyes. That's how he starts to. Um, but to Kerr, yes, Amanda, thank you. Um, to Kerr, did you want to maybe um, ask anything about, answer anything about the light language then? The movement of the hands is the universal language. And so as you are speaking, the hands move in the universal language as well. So multiple people may understand if they do not understand what you are saying. So you, although it is involuntary, it is because you are moving your hands in the direction that they need to go without thought process. Do you, yes, do you think because because sign language is a symbolic language versus a spoken word language? Do you think that it does have sort of uh, a higher connection to telepathy than say the words that we're speaking? There is also vibration within the movements of the hands while you are speaking. And so, yes, it, it does the movement of the hands while you are speaking portrays two aspects of the, the 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 speaking if you cannot speak the language that is that they are understanding then the hand signal is what is used so all children are using the hand signals and so as they watch us as or the humans speak they are also able to understand what is happening as well um i've heard that though when the hybrid children come they will be telepathic are they also going to be actually able to speak they are learning the human languages yes but yes they are also telepathic yes Okay, so it won't it wouldn't I, be such a situation where we couldn't uh, communicate to them either only telepathically or by sign language, or no? At this time. Okay. Until you I learn. I kind of them. feel, I feel sometimes like when I'm speaking languages and I'm speaking with the hybrid children that, um, are we actually teaching them how to speak our earth languages by speaking languages with them? Yes. Thank you. I thought so. Thank you. Okay. I must leave now. Okay. Thank you so I much to thank you for your time with me today and letting Angela come through. She was very nervous. Well, she, she was amazing. So thank you very much for, for being both. there with her and to you both for spending the time with us. You're welcome. Much love. Namaste. Much love to you. Namaste. We'll just let Angela come back for a moment. How you doing over there? Hi. Hi, you did amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank Great you job, so sweetie much. Pie. Really, very well, very good. Very nice to have to occur in a different package today. <laughs> in a whole hour, too. Yeah, wow. a little, yeah, a little bit longer even, about an hour and ten. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Did it? Did you? How was your experience? Um, it was good. I just um. The whole time I'm like, just keep me out, keep me in the kitchen, keep me in the kitchen, keep me over there. Don't let me were you in the kitchen. Where is that? Where you were yeah. in the kitchen? Yeah, I was in the kitchen. 
Were you able to interact with the kitchen or not? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, was it, because in the moments where we were just sort of talking, was it difficult for you to stay in in the? Um, it wasn't bad. Um, I, um, it wasn't bad. I just had to uh, just keep my focus on what I needed. Yeah. And so I also had um, someone in the kitchen that was talking with me. So. Yeah, that, that happens, was, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So was, was, that, was that Takur as well? Were you talking to Takur or some other being in there? Some other, someone else. Did you know who it was or? Um, yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's always interesting to see. I know that when I channel, um, time goes very, very fast for me. It's It's very, did, was it, did it feel, did you have any sense of time? Well, it certainly did not feel over an hour. That's for darn sure. <laughs> and like, yeah. it, I had no idea how much time had passed. Oh, that's awesome. We did an amazing job. So we hope you can do it again. And, uh, you know, we can maybe talk to some other uh, beings as well, you know, that you channel. So everyone, this was Angela. So thank you so much for that. No. Yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to add or just from your own perspective? Well, I'm, I'm glad that I did do this today because it kind of um, gave me a little, um, it, it, it did. It gave me a boost on, um, yeah. I mean, I can, I channel in like in privately and, sure. I, and, and so, but this was my, other than when I went to, um, when I went to hot springs, uh, I did do a little channeling there. Uh, but, and that was like my very first ever, like actually speaking other than myself, um, that was the yeah. very first time, but um, this is this is the first time I've actually channeled. For and, and what was your experience of having sort of the questions coming from sort of so many different directions? Was that because I always I, find that's the that's the key of the channeling? It's the question. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I didn't really listen too much to the questions. Because okay. like I was interacting in the kitchen because that was my way of trying to stay out of it as, as yeah. much as possible. Yeah, I'm. I, I think I'm, I'm very. Pre I'm very present in the channeling now. I'm. I'm. I'm becoming what's called an integrated channel. So it, it's getting closer and closer. Does that make sense? Right. right. But, um. It. It. And here's the thing as well. Although you say that, it's true. I had to it's almost like having to be in in two places because yeah. um you i did have to listen but not interact isn't that that's i had to listen so mm -hmm. that but yet i was off still off to the side yeah reuben langdon just did an interview and he said what was interesting he did a he was regressed by barbara lamb and he asked her if she could put him into a trance so that he could channel and his experience was at one moment he was channeling and he's not a channeler, but he did channel in this instance. Everyone's a channeler, but for, for the sake of this, he, it was his first time. And he had all of a sudden the sensation of hearing her from across the room. And he thought, oh, she got up and walked across the room. But what she never moved and he never moved because he was laying there that, um, that his, his consciousness went across the room. So that's why he was hearing it from that vantage point of her being across the room. And do you, did you have the feeling that you were hearing it from the kitchen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, very nice. And Wendy, are you still with us? I don't know if she's still I am. with us, but- yep, I was- uh, Oh, good. Yes, I, I was gonna I go am. back to the galactic language. Did you- um, how did you start speaking galactic languages, Angela? Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> I, I was thinking. <laughs> well, you're across, you're back in the kitchen. No, um, <laughs> I said, how did you uh, start speaking galactic languages? Um, I, I received the download and then um, I believe it was the hot springs and I got activated then. Yeah, Funny, so, a lot so of people, for you it's all come on A lot of people did. Yeah. Interesting yeah. because I was I was at Hot Springs for anybody who wasn't aware of that. And uh that was the first time I got to meet Angie and Jim and Sarah and 
there, you know, there was a bunch of us there and Will Mitchell, of course. And so that same weekend, um, Katie, uh, uh, there was a couple of gals there that were there that all, and this was interesting and this is a good example because we had been activated with different things all weekend long and many of us were speaking languages and there was a lot of people who really wanted to who hadn't begun yet. So one morning, um, I was actually doing a video at the time. We were having a video in the morning. I was making a video early in the morning. We were having our coffee. People were waking up and the girls came outside and said, we're going to go out on the boat dock because we are going to go and activate our galactic languages. We are ready. So we had been speaking them together all weekend. And then, I mean, they went out there with intention and within 30 minutes, and I actually videotaped them at the very end, they were so giddy. They were giggling. I mean, because they all started speaking together all at one time. They just, because they wanted to, they were interested in it. It excited them and they set out the intention and when they came, and I actually did a video of them, you know, after they started speaking them and they were just thrilled. And so it was, it's as if something like just opens up inside of you and very interesting about the play, play, play and the inner child, because it's about trusting and letting go of everything, all of your, well, just like channeling all of your inhibitions, but trusting that you're never ever going to say or do anything or invite anything at all that you don't want to you are always in charge and that's a really important thing to remember because i think yes. people don't trust because they're really afraid um you know even my husband asked me you know when i first explained it to him well how do you know you're not letting in something or how do you what portals how do you know you're opening up good portals and not bad portals it's because i know it's because i know my frequency and it's my and my intention and my heart and the way i the way i intend to stay in high frequencies and trust that i am only going to invite you know the highest purest light energy and so forth well if you're in a high frequency you can only attract the frequency right. where you are and that was actually related to the question that i had about the divergent timelines with Takur. is it humanity can have disclosure now they could but all of us are not at a higher high enough frequency to really right. bring in the kind of beings that we say we want to meet right you know correct we don't want i don't know that we want everyone you know it's kind of like down here is all the conspiracy and abduction stuff and sort of up here is the light beings the hybrid children right. and the you know beautiful new world kind of energy and we're still sort of moving it out of this and if we if we bring it in now, kind of force it through the machine, we're going to get this. And we're going to have all those scenarios that are still playing out, you know. And, and, it's, it, and it's a, I think that the reason we haven't had disclosure is because I think as humanity, we really are trying to go to the higher frequency ones because we do know that that's going to be a better result for us overall. Right. And you and you see you see people choosing. You just see every day people opening, 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 and really wanting to move in that high frequency. But everything is that we want is is in that better frequency. We really have to open to it. And you know, we say opening to it, but really, it's inside you. So you have to go inside to get it. It's not like it's going to come from outside. It will manifest in better world, better conditions, but where you find it, like the question about how do we stop the cabal? We don't focus on the cabal. That's how we stop them. We don't focus on them at all. We don't give them any of our energy, any of our attention. What we do focus on is what we want and we build the world that we want. Exactly. You know, if anybody remembers, if everyone, who's not a, everyone that's an American knows the show Santa Claus is coming to town. You know it, mm -hmm. you know, and they talked about the, the, the people that like outlawed Christmas. Remember the little claymation. Yep. <laughs> and there's a beautiful line. There's a beautiful line in, um, 
in that movie and they were like when they talked about what happened and they're like what happened to the i don't remember what they were called the something meisters what happened to the something meisters and oh. and um the, the the response was they just died off and people stopped paying attention yeah. to them you know and, and people continued to celebrate christmas and the people they just ignored them and they finally went away well that's a good and that's point. basically this it's Here a beautiful too, line and if i could quote i gotta quote it and find the little clip but there's this one moment where the little kid goes what happened to the old Burgermeisters. Burgermeister just means. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say. I think it was Burgermeister. <laughs> but Burgermeister means mayor. It's or not like a, I know. <laughs> you know. But they're like, well, what happened to the Burgermeister? Like, oh, they just died off because well, we people stopped paying attention to, to them. We have to put ourselves in the in the position of and and from the perspective of our galactic friends out there because would we want to? travel to oh, no. a strange world <laughs> where we had the where we were really didn't know if we were going to be shot on spot were we going to be greeted were we going to you know how are we going to be well received? i'm you know i'm sorry but if you're not even willing to accept a migrant child exactly or a refugee or each into other your country or someone who's are you a gonna different really, color than yeah. you or speaks a different language yeah. Or, yeah they're trying to tell us this every day in all these channelings you guys yeah. haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. How do you expect us to come and see you if you can't even get along? No. Right. Yeah. So that's where that's why you have also too. That's why you have so many different messages within channeling. You have Jim, uh, someone like Jim and and you know Rob Goth here, Bashar, you know, who are really channeling these beings, these alien beings. And then you have people like me who are channeling more the sort of spiritual concept of what a better world will look like. And you have different people channeling different things because the entire collective. Right is trying to give all of the keys that we need to get where we say we want to go. You know, there, there was a, I know Wendy, if you remember, there was a few years ago when Theos was saying, when do you believe what you say you believe? When does your life reflect that which you say what you want? And until we line up with that exactly level of speech, when our heart and our mind and our, you know, being is focused in the same way, when our actions reflect our words, actually what, what's happening now is our actions are reflecting a lot of the time what's in our heart. So we really have to make sure we clean up our own vibrations in order well, we have, to- We haven't even still owned the fact that we create our own reality. <laughs> well, it's it's baby I mean, steps. It's baby exact, steps. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. It's baby steps. And the thing also too is, and this is something that, um, I got a while ago and people maybe want, don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's really not about any of our own individual wants. Right. It's really not. It's about we, you know, my thing for the longest time was oneness, oneness, oneness. It's still about that, but because that's really, we are a human collective. Right. It's no, it's no, uh, mistake that all of these beings that come to us and talk to us many times are collectives of beings you've got the council of nine you've got i don't know you've got every kind of collective there because there does come a point in higher vibration where it stops being really about the individual i the me what do i want it's about what do we as a species as a group as an energetic collective want so all of this that has to happen before disclosure, it's not even just about disclosure that it has to happen. Right. It has to happen be about before ascension. It has to happen for before the world gets better, before your own personal life gets better. And the more you start to focus on yourself as part of all, everything, everything that is, to realize your part in that, the less you're so worried about your own personal, oh, when am I gonna get what I need? You know, and, and when we start to remember that it's not just about me, it's not about just about you, but it's about everything in the grander scheme of it, we are in the very beginning of this transformational process. And many of us, You've seen, I mean, people live and die every single day. And many of the people who have worked their whole life just to get to this point will never see 
the outcome, but it doesn't make the you know, contribution that you make right now with your higher frequencies, holding those higher frequencies so that they become the norm and not just this wild exception to the rule. You know, it, it's going to take a lot of lifting before we get there and we stay there and we can maintain it and anchor it. You know, right now it's kind of like hit or miss a lot of the time. So the more we collectively focus and shift and, and it's got to happen on every aspect of your life it's not just oh i'm gonna you know if you're hit if you're yelling at your dog and you know mean to your neighbor and you know giving the middle finger to the guy where you're driving you're not there and the sooner we realize that on every level for everyone it's 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 the better and so when we start to think about each other as a we and not an i that's when we'll really start to get there. And it's not going to be tomorrow. It may not be for a long time. I don't want to put any time because I don't want to limit anybody. I don't want to discourage anybody. But I just want everyone to really enjoy this process of expansion and your part in it. Because you will come back <laughs> eventually. You might come back in another incarnation. But your, your part that you play right now, that little ripple that you make every single day, makes such a difference but it's not just we we really have to get past this i thing you know that's a very very true statement once yeah. the people um once you think about the the whole and and then that raises the vibration we bring that level of consciousness up and yeah. when, when the the the, the whole consciousness is, is at the level that it needs to be at. That's when you see things moving forward. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's very difficult. It's very difficult to, and I'm, I, I'll give just like a, a small personal thing. It's very difficult to move off of I and onto we. Yeah. And when you move off of I, you, you actually see things happening and you see a change, not only in yourself, but also in, in the things around you. And so I, I was very, um, you know, I was so thankful that I did move off I and what I wanted and what I wanted to see and what I wanted to happen. And when I, when I moved off that and onto yeah. what the collective and, and the we, I, I, it, it's, it's, I feel so much better. I feel not only for myself, but knowing that I am bringing the energy, that energy right. to the we versus the I. Right. And, and when you, you know, when you have that energy, who someone's I'm gonna make sure that, okay there's no feedback but when you have that energy and you're able to maintain that what happens is you you raise your vibration those vib you're gonna stay within it and then the yes. yep. it's like a magnet all those vibrations start you know the things that are just like here they'll raise up and and you'll get pulled up even higher but this is happening on a you know universal wide way we are collectively raising that energy but it, it does take the time and and the perspective that everyone really if they had one thing they could like say okay what do i focus on to awaken that in myself is to really realize what all is or what one is or what oneness is it's one thing there's nothing outside of the all and we're all part of it we're all part of it so there's no difference between you and me and you and the people that I see typing in the chat. We are all exactly each other. We have individual uh, ideas because of this incarnation that we are here, that we've taken part of this world that we've participated in. But when we start to realize that we're all, no matter skin color, anything, even the, you know, the, the chair in my house is part of me. When we start to realize that, then collectively we become stronger because we're not running in a bunch of different directions and we start to move together and we can choose together. We can think together. And, and really, what is it that we all, <laughs> we all really say that we want? What is it we really, really want? We want the connection. We want the knowing. We want the, the experience 
of a better, of better, of more, of love. That's what we really deep down, no matter what else is playing out in your life and in your mentality, really that's what every human being wants. And, and if we can appreciate other people's incarnation, especially the people that are completely lost, that have no knowing of who they are, that you appreciate their delving deeper and deeper into this unknowing and have the compassion and the empathy, then it, then it changes things. You know, there's a, there's a concept in Africa called Umbutu. I don't know if you know what that is. But Umbutu is the concept of, of unity. And they did an experiment. It, it's a different way of thinking, but it is a thinking in a unified way. They had some fruit and they put it across uh, the way for these children. And there was a line of children. And the guy did an experiment. He said, whoever can run the fastest to this fruit and get it, it can have it, you know? And there was just like one or two apples or something like that. It was just a few pieces of fruit. And there was a few kids and whoever could have run there. Now, if you do that for an American child, you know, or somebody else, most of the time they'll just knock each other over. And I, I'm not saying it's 100% true, to get it. But these kids, they held hands and they ran together to the fruit so that they all could win and they all could have it and they all could share it. And there was no concept of, I'm gonna take it all for myself, but that there's this much, so we're all gonna share it. And that's what's called Mbutu. And that's what has to happen in humanity for us to really raise our vibration. This no question if you should have clean water. There should be no question if children should have health care. There should be no question if people should have a place to live and warm clothes and education. These should be, these are so nonsensical. Oh, who's, who's, uh, needs to mute. But these are such basic human rights that are part of who we are and, and we have no reason to deny anybody anything. And until we break out of that mentality and start to demonstrate over and over again so that it becomes normal for us to take care of each other and for us to love each other, then, you know, that's that's the higher vibration. That's where we're going. So anyway. Magnificent, Karen. I mean, you just impossible. Yes, everything. And I am familiar with that. I I am familiar with that 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 uh, uh, Ubuntu. I remember reading about that several years ago, and that's actually part of was actually one of the elements in my my own awakening process and the idea of oneness. And, so you know, well, wonder. so 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 the thing is too, like for for when it comes to ending all of that. Um, hmm. And you know the irony of the whole thing, or I should say, the par the paradox. Oh, go ahead. I hit a bad. Spot I hit here. a bad spot. Yeah. I'll give you a second. Uh, I, meant I got a bad spot. There you go. Are you okay now? Um, I'll just I'll just continue talking for a second while she's uh, muted, but. The, the thing is, is that you say you have something like a galactic language and you say, well, why do we even have this? Why do we even have the ability to speak it? And it's not just so you can speak some cool language and someone can interpret it and it's really cool. The reason that we have it is, is our innate ability for connection. If we realize that our physical bodies are designed to connect, we have within our own physical being a sound mechanism through tone, through sound, sound is only vibration that allows us to raise our vibration, to connect to our divine self. There's no reason why you wouldn't use that, whether you're meditating or toning like the Hathors or making noises or doing whatever and through the galactic languages, the very galactic language I believe very much, the very reason that we have it at all is to be for a demonstration for us that we have this ability to connect. You're shaking your head. 
Yeah, you know, I uh, when I do speak in um, galactic language, you know, after I'm done, you know, I have a sense of, you know, like, you know, it, it just makes me feel so. Yeah, it it really is. It's really peace when I when it's I peace. speak galactic language. I I really feel at peace inside. Really, that's the perfect word. Because you're connecting, you are aligning. You're aligning to the fullness of who you are internally. Um, Theo says something. Um, Theo says something that I, I think is really uh, interesting, and I love the way they say it, and I didn't realize what they were saying when the first time they've said it, but they bring it up to me, and they say always, close your eyes and realize that in that moment, you are standing in the perfect mind of God, because that's what we are. We are existing beings in the wholeness of the mind of God creation. That's what we are. And when we close our eyes, we get a little bit of a sense of that. And that's a, it's a way of being centered. And through sound, we can raise our vibration so that we are truly, truly aligned with our, our truest self. So there's a reason why when you meditate and there's a reason why when you tone and you make, you know, do mantra and you speak galactic languages, you are, you're tapping in to your, the purest part of you, the, the, the truest part of you, whether you can understand it or not, there's a part of you that feels it, you feel it in your, in your being. You, you, vibe, you raise that vibration and it's an amazing thing. So it's really a tool for everyone to use. It's, it's not something that, you know, in the, I would say like in the 60s, 70s and the time before that in the 80s, if you were a psychic or a medium, it was kind of everyone says, oh, it's my gift. That's because people didn't know how to access it. It's everybody's gift. Yes. It's everybody's gift. It's, but it's not really a gift. It's sort of your birthright, really. It is your birthright to be able to connect. We came equipped. We came into this world equipped. So everyone's running around and asking everybody, you know, how do I get this information? How do I find out this? But it's here. It's here. Right here. And you just have to go in after it. It's just like Alex experiencing that. You know, he's opening now to all these experiences of, of who he is and, and, and all the things. There's, and it's all here. It's all coming internally. It's not really happening outside of you because there's nothing really outside of you. Everything's inside you. So I think maybe the best thing to do, Wendy, are you there? Dearest Wendy? Chica Wendy? I think we should do a meditation, and I think we should connect. Do you want to lead a meditation, Angela, or no? Um, I don't really know how to lead a meditation. Okay, I will lead a meditation. Um, if Wendy comes back, we we can do uh, something. And uh, but 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 basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a meditation. Um, I'm gonna take everyone. I'm gonna grab my harmonium, which is sitting right there, and we're gonna tone. You're gonna have to do it on your own uh, um, thing, but we're gonna tone collectively on a certain note. And and the reason we do that is when we hit that certain note together, we will be joining collectively on the same energy level. And, and what's amazing about the universe is like nothing ever is destroyed or created. So um, it's, you know, it all is. So when we hit that note, we will be joining all the other people who've toned on that one note and we will raise this energy uh, together. So just one moment, I'm gonna grab my harmonium. <laughs> This, for the people that don't know, is a harmonium. Um, Leila is asking what the subject is today. Well, Jim was sick, so we decided we were going to do something a little different. We did an open channeling. We had Angela and she channeled Takur, but Takur has since left us. And then we the, the conversation moved to uh, toning, oneness, and galactic language. So, <laughs> so for the last uh, few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to do a guided meditation. We're going to tone on a note. This is a this is a, a harmonium. This is an Indian instrument that I play, and we're going to tone on the sound of ah. 
And the reason that we're going to do that is because ah is actually the first sound. It's the first sound of om. But when uh, the world was created or reflected or expelled out into being, it came out in this sound of ah. And when we align with this one sound, we're actually aligning with all of creation and who we really are. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> So if everyone will just uh, take a nice, uh, good seat in their chair. And what I'll explain to you is that you have, we're going to have this sound. So you have a sound. You have this octave. You can choose any sound within the octave. So you can be like, ah, ah, ah. whatever sound within that tone you want to pick, it's fine, but the important sound is the ah. And, and when you do this, we want you to, uh, we, I want you to close your eyes and just take a deep breath because it's really important that you bring your focus sort of to your third eye. And just let the sound come in, but, but, but let the opening here start. And also if you feel it here, the ah, what happens when you tone ah, you'll feel it move. You'll feel it move down through your chakras, but it'll start sort of somewhere around your head and it'll, and it'll stop in your heart. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that for just a few minutes. Okay. So take a deep breath, put your feet on the floor, close your eyes just for the ease of focus. And you're just gonna let out a nice, solid ah in the most easy way possible. Because if you think about creation, it wasn't just spit out. Creation is a long, extended flow of energy. It's never ending, it's continual. So we're gonna make our sound also a little bit continual. speaking a galactic language and as you hear this sound and this is called a drone this tone if you can allow the feeling of any sound that comes up to just let it to just let it come out this could be your activation for your own galactic language We'll start with ah, and if you feel any sound coming out, just let it out. Ah. Ah. 
into an O. I'm going to just do that three times. Just stay in the after sound of the tone. And let the resonance of the vibration just wash over you. And we'll end in the way that you end in mantra with the Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which means peace, peace, peace. So mm -hmm. Om Shanti Shanti. Shanti. Namaste. I hope Namaste. that it helped you to feel. I don't know if you felt any desire for any language to come up, but if you did feel that pull, just find a way to good. You can go onto YouTube and you can type in drone. Uh, uh, you can type in a harmonium drone or a just drone, and you can. Pick a note like this was uh, B flat. You could pick A, G, just whatever note fits within your your voice in the best way. And you can just begin to tone over that note just with ahs and with ohms and see what starts to stimulate and just let that flow out of you. Because now that you've had this sort of activation, it will come to you if you feel led to let it out. So. And next week, Wendy will be here, so she'll be answering any questions when it comes to like languages. She'll also be channeling. So I want to thank you. I want to thank Angela so very much for uh, being our default channeler today, for stepping up and bringing to occur to us with so much beautiful information. And thank you so thank much you. for the share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry to... Um, I'm sorry to Diana. Well, next time she'll get her question in. Took her left right before her question was answered. So, so thank you so very much, everyone. And just for this has been Human Colony. It is the um, it is the twentieth of January. And if you would like to take part in the Ascension Workshop that's coming up in Sedona, February first through the sixth, you can go to humancolony.org and you can sign up for it there. So if you feel really led to it, then definitely go and check it out. So human colony or hukalo.org. So namaste everyone and thank you so very much. Namaste. Thank you, Bloodstream. Much love to everyone. Thank you. Namaste. Bye.